following episode was recorded in front of a live audience over at SGK+. Just head over to SagaNightKevin.com slash SGK+. If you want to be a part of it, every single Wednesday, unless it's like a holiday or something, I hang out with the members of SGK+, as we watch one of these movies, and I record my episodes. It's kind of a behind-the-scenes look at what it really takes to put together a review of a terrible movie. Or maybe a good movie. Maybe this is the one. Oh, by the way, this episode was edited by Liz Not Lizzie, who, from what I've been told, has new merch. Check this out. That's some good looking stuff. Go support her, she does a good job. All right, let's get into the review. How's it going, everybody? Welcome, world, to this week's episode. I say this week, but it's not a once a week show. It's just whenever I have time. Welcome to Say Movie Night. Kevin. Kevin. Boy, oh boy, am I excited today because we are rounding out the trilogy. Started this review series years ago, completing it this very night. The Christmas Shoes trilogy. You didn't know it was a trilogy. Nobody did. This is like the God's Not Dead series in terms of people being surprised when they find out that it's a trilogy. So, um, perfect. Anything that's like God's Not Dead is great in my book. What is this movie? I don't know. I haven't watched it. I don't know anything about it. All I know is this is the third in the Christmas Shoes series. Now, last time in Christmas Shoes, we got to explore where the little boy who bought the shoes is today, or at least where he was in 2000, whatever. He is Doogie Howser now, and he's all grown up. Tragedy just seems to follow him wherever he goes. Found a girlfriend, and that girlfriend got real sick. Found a little friend that he could kind of be a big brother to, and that little boy, spoiler alert, died. And we got a nice little cameo from Rob Lowe, who was, of course, the star of the original film. That was a weird way to continue the series. That's probably the thing that I'm most excited about, is finding out where we are in this trilogy. How does this connect? When lives intertwine during Christmas. Oh, good. It's another lives intertwining movie. My favorite. My favorite. Hope. Oh, I forgot to even mention, this is called The Christmas Hope. Hope is the one unifying gift. I sure hope that Hope is the name of one of the characters. During what turns out to be the most joyful time of the year. Turns out Christmas is the most joyful time of the year. Like the old song says, it's the most joyful time of the year. Da -dum -bum -bum -bum. I threw it on the ground. Well, is this going to be the best of the Christmas Shoes trilogy? As Yoda said, they always come in threes, just like shoes. There's only one way to find out, and that's to jump right into it. So ladies and gentlemen, grab your hope. The thing about atheism doesn't take away the pain, it just takes away the hope. And let's get right into my movie night review of A, a Christmas, Christmas hope. hope. I'm gonna miss you, Rob Lowe. I'm gonna miss you. The movie begins the way all Christian Christmas movies have to begin with the flyover shot, or at least an aerial shot. Then we cut to this lady who's not singing very well. Sorry. Hey, the Christmas hope. I hope the girl ends up in a store and she's like, Sir, I want to buy this hope for my mama, please. Music has always held a special place in the universe of Christmas shoes. Then we meet this couple. I wonder what this guy's profession is. I'm the doctor, okay? Oh, okay. Then our new doctor friend has an unexpected Christmas run-in. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can be so classy sometimes. Oh, it's okay. It's my fault. Oh, he's so cute. My daughter would flip. Well, keep it. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Oh, you please, you'd be doing us a favor. <laughs> it's filled with meth. Then we cut to the worst sound in the world, somebody else's child crying. <laughs> this is what I think is a new character, and she finds this baby that's abandoned. As the scene goes on, we find out she's a social worker, so that makes a little more sense here. <laughs> we'll cut back to the doctor and his pregnant wife. They're at this little diner, and holy crap, I just realized who this guy is. <laughs> Let's go show him what it means to be a hero. Well, he's showing us what it means to be a hero with this brave conversation about his unborn child. What if he's born on Christmas Day? What if he's born on Christmas Day? How dare you assume our child's gender? Well, while at the diner, the lady from the previous scene, who we now know as a social worker, shows up at the restaurant too. Wow, I didn't realize all of their lives were gonna collide this early. Would you mind warming this up for me? Of course, okay. And filling it up with breast milk. 
thinks. That's when this guy with the hoodie decides to get up and walk out without paying. But our wet nurse waitress friend lets him get away with it. Just ask next time, okay? <laughs> Asking's for lamos. Wait, you're covering that little creep's butt when you need 20 bucks? Christmas. It's the most butt covering time of the year. Then we cut over to the Thanks Corporation. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Hi, it's Roy Braden from Child Support. How are you? Just calling to say thanks. Anyway, they're trying to find a place for this little baby to stay. Apparently the way social work goes is you just make cold calls trying to hand off orphans, I guess? Uh, right. Yes. Listen, uh, we're in Four little baby jam. Old. We've got a little baby. Yes, a uh, female. Placed. Boy, selling this baby would be way easier if I didn't have my co-worker's desk immediately across from me. I, I don't see why. I know, it's a lot to ask, but she needs... That's frustrating. Fortunately, they do find a place for the little baby. Ah, oh, isn't that great? Oh, you know oh. me and kids. I'd take them all if I could. But, you know, I can't, so I just leave some of them in the snow. She's a little feverish. You think? Maybe she needs to go lay in the snow. Meanwhile, somebody else, somewhere else. I believe this is the waitress. Is that right? She comes home to her daughter, and boy, are they happy. Ah, you know what that means in a Christmas shoes movie. Mama's gonna look so... An early Christmas present. He's so cute. I'm gonna name him Caramel. Then we cut back over to the social worker at home, because of course we do, and that's when we find out she's married to Dexter's dad. How was the flight? Stormy. Stormy over Boston. New York was the usual milk run. And that's when he starts asking the really deep questions. Where in the Bible does it say that angels have to have wings? And also... Where in the world is... I'm in San Diego. Uh, in the Bible where it says that there were the angels singing with three sets of wings. Two to cover their face, two to cover their feet, and two to fly. To sing holy, holy, holy. Holy! Well, let's get back to being emotionally manipulated by that single mother and her daughter. Have you finally decided what you want to ask Santa for? These Christmas shoes. What was your best Christmas ever? When she was born. After you were born. I knew it. I know how moms think. <laughs> Sappy and lame. Am I right? Speaking of emotions, it seems that the social worker and Dexter's dad are emotionally distancing themselves. I'll finish packing when I get back. Gonna go on a flight. I hope the rapture doesn't come while I'm in flight. Cut back to, you guessed it, the mom and her daughter. And it seems the mom is having a difficult time finding a babysitter. Isn't she watching me? No, but Santa is, so uh, I'm just gonna leave you here. And while that may sound like a dumb quip Kevin just made, that's actually what happens in the movie. She's leaving her daughter all alone. I said she'd be here in one hour. Just an hour. That's fine. She's old enough, right? Well, you better believe me as an audience member will be watching that clock very closely. How do I look? You need a little bit more lipstick. Uh-huh. That's what I thought. That's right, I'm headed out the door to something that's so important I have to leave my very young child home alone. But also, I'm gonna let that very young child do my makeup for it. Actually does look pretty good. Good job, kid. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I have a very special Christmas present for you. A pair of shoes. But I thought she already got her Christmas present. An early Christmas present. You don't have to be afraid while I'm gone, okay? God is with you. Yeah, and Santa. And Satan. They're all here. They're everywhere. Well, don't set the house on fire or get cancer or anything. Here's some long string for you to wrap around your neck and get caught in the fan. Good luck. Well, that's when Tracy, going along her Merry Christmas little way... Road work ahead? Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. ...bumps into something not quite as soft as a teddy bear. No! I should have expected this, but didn't expect it. Tragedy strikes! Why? Tell me why! Jesus? Is my mommy looking beautiful with her lipstick for you tonight? The end. In true Christmas shoes fashion, not only does that girl get hit in the face by a car, but we get hit in the face by all kinds of sadness. Well, as you might have expected, because it said it on the back of the tin, worlds collide. When the social worker shows up to take care of business. She's not coming home, Emily. 
There was an accident. She died. Um, I don't think so. She promised she'd be home soon. Sweetheart, it's not her fault. Look, moms make all kinds of promises that they don't keep. Why can't I live here? Because I don't want you to be alone, sweetheart. Well, why are you the one who's in charge? That's when the social worker shows up to take care of business. Well, yes, I'm making jokes, but uh, I'm also sad. Liar! But that's when the little girl gives us an indication that something sinister is afoot. I wasn't alone. Someone was holding my hand. Someone was holding my hand. I know it's just a few days before Christmas. I, I know. I know. She knows. She knows. But in this universe, because it's Christmas time, finding somebody to take in an orphan child is just impossible. Nobody has any room. What am I supposed to do? Put her in a manger. It's going to be okay, Karma. She named the bear Carmen or Karma. Both fitting names, I think. Well, since they couldn't find a decent home for Emily, Patricia, the social worker, takes her to her own house. Cause that's how it works. Emily. Emily. Emily, don't touch that. It's filled with the ghosts of my dead son. Oh, right. So uh, the movie must have established this at some point, but I'm not gonna go back and look. I must have cut it out in the edit and uh, wasn't paying attention. Anyway. The social worker and the pilot, Dexter's dad, you get it. They used to have a son and he passed away. We still don't know how yet. We'll find out, I'm sure. He must be a star. He was before he became an angel. What's this? Just Pandora's box. Don't open it! Well, she answers all her questions with a flashback. Mom, what'd you do with my basketball jersey? I don't know, I don't wear your jersey. What'd you do with my jock strap? I don't know, I don't, well, actually I was wearing that. Here you go. Gotta go. Love you, bye. Love you too. And that's why you always leave a note. There used to be a watch in here that belonged to my grandfather. What happened to it? Let's put it away, okay? Put it away, put it away, put it away now. But as Patricia's leaving the room, she notices Emily is acting very strange. Emily, what is it? Who's that? Die? That's Sean. Can I see him? No. Why? Because he's in heaven now. What? I wasn't expecting that. I thought they already made that pretty clear, but I guess it is a child. And that way you make the movie as if though it's for a child. This is Emily. She's gonna stay here tonight. Oh, hi Emily. My name's Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Later, Patricia's co-social worker shows up for a little visit. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. You stay right there. Stay. Stay. Who's he talking to? His wife? You stay right there. That's when we see he has a mysterious figure in the back seat. But before going inside, the co-social worker gives Dexter's dad a little tidbit of information he might find interesting. Sean worked with this kid in the Big Brother program for a couple of months. So how's it going? It's the kid from the diner who didn't pay, remember? So you knew my son, Sean. Leave me alone, you're not my dad. But the kid isn't very talkative, which I'm sure won't come into play later on in the movie. All right, well, later, it's time to say goodnight, Emily. My mom has a special Christmas present for me. Emily, I know how much you miss your mom. But Christmas is over. She can't come back for Christmas. She is so coming back. Yeah, I like, you know, I take a little hip hop class. Mm, the denial stage of grief. That's when we get some insight about how the boy died. Mixed in, of course, with some very coincidental connections. Dad, you there? Remember I told you I'm helping out with Big Brother and I'm uh, mentoring this kid? He's got lots of potential. And he's a shooter. And he's a little bit of trouble, too. <laughs> anyway, be home soon. That kid in the back of Roy's car, I think he might be who Sean was talking about. Play it in your car. Honey, if I unplug it, it'll erase. Well, the loss of their son is taking its toll on their marriage, as they're both handling it in two different and difficult ways. You think I want to feel like this, do you? All I know is I'd like to talk to my wife. I can't keep this bottled up much longer. If I do, I'm gonna explode. Well, isn't that the reason you want to move out? So you could explode? Hmm. <laughs> He's not gonna move out because he knows that she'll get half the stuff <laughs> or more. She'll get all that money, all of his pilot money, so she can go gallivanting around pretending to help kids. Because her 
form of grief is socially acceptable, social servicely acceptable. Well, the next morning we find that Mark and Emily have formed a type of parental bond, but Patricia will stop at nothing to end it. We have to go back to your house to get the rest of your clothes, okay? Wow, what a buzzkill. Why can't she stay here for Christmas? It's against the agency's rules. Then we cut back over to the pregnant teddy bear couple. They're a couple with a pregnant teddy bear. I thought you were getting the wreath. Oh, sorry. I was looking for it in the closet and I found this box of junk. Hey, you know what they say, one man's junk is another man's plot device. What's this? What's this? There's white things in the air. A pair of shoes. That's when we find out that Sharknado guy is actually Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris is the boy from the last movie. Buy my mom some Christmas shoes. It all makes sense now. And I guess the pregnant lady is the girl from the last movie. I meant to get it to his parents. Maybe you still can. Nah. Parents don't exist anymore. But who could this boy who died on the operating table's parents be? Who could they be? Well, in an unrelated note, cut back to the social worker, where we get more marriage difficulties. Why are you here, Mark? Yeah, why are you here, Mark? Oh, why, Mark? I miss Sean every single day. Okay, not every day, but- I lost my only son. Yeah, well, so did God, and you don't see him crying about it. Well, later, Patricia has to take Emily apparently to the emergency room to get her checked out by a doctor. And it's not even like this is normal procedure for her because this is apparently the first time she's been to this emergency room since her son died. Judging by the fact that it triggers some crazy PTSD. God, help me. Help me. Whoa! Wow. Uh, I think this lady's mentally unstable, which means she's a perfect candidate to be a government agent. Excuse me, is there a problem? Dun, dun, dun! It's the mom of the boy who dropped the thing that he promised he would save. Wow, they really made these connections. Where are we going? On an adventure. I'm gonna teach you to murder the right people like I did with my son, Dexter. Why can't we just stay home? That's no fun. Home sucks. That's where my kid died. It could be his heart was two sizes too small. It's a fort. John and I built it when he was just a little boy. Out of snow and it's still there? Where do they live? Oh, don't go in there. This is how he died. <laughs> and that's where she murdered him. It's kind of complicated, sweetheart. I'll be good. I swear. Uh, it's not based on your goodness. It's just that the state has rules and regulations. Wow, what an unintentionally libertarian moment. <laughs> Ouch, my back, I'm so old. Why did I think this was a good idea? Later that night, we get more marital disputes. Wow, they really captured the spirit of Christmas. Well, Patricia's upset, not because he took Emily to the fort, but that she didn't know about the fort. When did you two build it? That's reasonable, I think. We chopped down some branches and found some old lumber and stuffed leaves between the cracks. And then we stuffed leaves between the branches. <laughs> Cause of butt cracks. If you had come home Tuesday, he would have come home Tuesday, but you came home Wednesday. Oh no, she's blaming him. What do you want me to say? That you killed our son. Okay. You win. Everything he did was for you. Patty, please let it go. No, no, I won't let it go. Cole never bothered me anyway. Then we cut over to Mark, who's taken up with a new kid. He sounds like a good man. Oh yeah, he is. He was really sick though, and my mom and I had meaning to go out and visit him. Wow, I'm glad we're learning about his family and background too. Do you play for your team, your high school team? It's not really my thing, but... You should, I mean, you got power, you got size, you got a shot. All you don't have is a dad to cheer you on. <gasps> If we worked on your game, you could play for your high school varsity Look, no, team. man. I'm in college, dude. You're just like Sean. He'd call me up and I'd want to talk about math, and then, and then he'd go into some higher level crap. You know, when you call up your friends and you just want to talk about math. Hey, man, just thinking about math. What's the deal with math? Meanwhile, Emily's hanging out with Patricia's insensitive mother. Bet your mom was a good cook. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. I threw it on the ground. My mommy lied. She said she would come home when we would decorate the Christmas tree. Well, you can't really fault her for that. Did you lie when you said you liked that mac and cheese? No, I think I said something that upset her. Oh. 
I said, your mom's in hell. And I, I don't know, she just got so upset. Well, we knew Emily couldn't stay there forever, and it turns out Patricia's found a next of kin. Sweetheart, do you remember your uncle? I remember his breath. I remember he was breathing, unlike my mom. What's gonna happen to her? She needs a family to live with. Mom, you know I can't have a child in this house. What makes you think I was talking about you? You couldn't even keep your own kid alive. Oh, my mouth, I'm sorry. I think my husband's gone off naked. Life goes on. La, 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 life goes on. And like it or not, life's gonna go on for you too. La, la, la. But when she gets back from having that long conversation with the grandma, Emily's gone. Where do you think she is? I think she's gone to the secret cave. Well, it looks like she's headed there, but... That's when Emily falls into a crevice, gets her arm stuck, and eventually has to cut it off. That's when the curse of the Christmas shoes comes to get her. This is the Emily, the lost little girl in the woods that the dogs in Homeward Bound find. It's all connected. Thank you for saving my little girl's life. But of course, Patty finds Emily in the cave. You gave me such a fright. And the weather outside is also frightful. But the stars are so delightful. Say! Will you read to me? Yes. I'll go get you a book, okay? Just not the one about the mom being alive till she's old. Oh, great. It is that one. <laughs> Look, Emily, I don't know if you realize this book is about a mom being alive till she's old and you taking care of her and stuff. You're not going to be able to do that. A mother held a new baby. My mom loved this book. And Being an adult now, I'm like, this is so manufactured. It's like every country song all in a book. I thought it was silly that his mom would sing the song to him. What's wrong? Because my son never got past that age. <laughs> so. Why wouldn't she read Christmas shoes? A little boy came to her house and picked her up in his arm and sang. <laughs> now the boy's doing it for the, 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 the mom. Neither one of them will ever experience the end of this book. <laughs> I get it now. No, 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 no. <laughs> We gotta have Barkley here. Come on. Come here, buddy. Oh, buddy boy. Oh, buddy boy. Oh, I'll love you forever. I'll love you for always. I was just looking for someone to blame. You, me, God. It's Christian? Sometimes you just have to sit still and hurt. That's what Barkley's doing right now. Sitting still and hurting. I can feel my leg, and my arm, even my fingers. Hello, everyone. I'm talking about adopting her. What? Apparently there's no such thing as conflict of interest in the Christmas Shoes cinematic universe. But when she gets to work, she finds out the uncle actually does want to adopt her. I think I want to be a mother again. I want to live again. I want to live again. The brother wants to keep her. There's not much we can do. If you got the brother, you're not a mother. Here, this is for your new baby. Wait a minute. That's the, that's the teddy bear that he got. My mom got me a special Christmas present. No. Your mom. Wait, I don't remember who they gave the bear to. My daughter would flip. Well, keep it. Oh, no, no, no. No, I didn't mean that. Oh, you please. Oh. You'd be doing us a favor. My mom died. Wow. Thanks for bringing down the room, kid. Finally. The doctor figures it out after we've all figured it out. At the same time, Patricia's over here convincing Emily's deadbeat uncle to sign over the rights to Emily to her. You mean I'm not getting any money? No, you're getting the child. Which means that you're gonna have to clothe her, feed her, get her to school on time. Uh, wait, 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 this is not, uh... It's kind of an ethical gray area, I suppose. Well, it's been a little while since we've had a touching sweet Christmas moment, so... How about a scene with Mark and that troubled youth? Pilots get travel vouchers every year and I never use all mine. You and your mom can use those to take that trip to L.A. to see your grandfather. Why are you doing this? Why are you being nice to me? I want you to hate me! When I was 15, I got arrested, and my probation officer asked me what I was really interested in. He hooked me up with a guy that had a single-engine Beechcraft. Ew. He told me you can't do anything about the weather, you can't do anything about the wind, but you can adjust the attitude of your aircraft. Mm, that's true. My dad used to tell me that, because my dad used to fly Cessnas. Kind of the idea that life is 20% 
what happens to you and uh, 90% how you respond to it. What's the deal with math? A lot of life is about perspective. Perspective. Life isn't fair. Things happen. The rain falls on everyone. Can't change what's happening to you. You can't change that bad things happen to you. But what you can do is respond to it. That doesn't mean like you're not sad or you don't have like ask for help or whatever. But it does mean that you keep pressing on and you don't live as a victim. Uh, like that uncle. On top of that, my dad used to always say that most of the time you're going in the wrong direction in a plane. Hey, bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet. Headed in the right direction, but you're not on course. I guess that's what it is, because you're constantly just making small corrections. Most of the time, you're off course. Life lessons from Kevin's dad. Bye. Hope you find your dad. Oh, yeah. At some point, we saw that this guy actually stole Emily's mom's backpack, so. But now he's starting to grow a conscience? <gasps> All right, well, let's head back home to find out what happens I when Patricia breaks the news to Emily. And he told me to tell you that he loves you very much, but that he can't take you in. And where will I live? I've got a stocking for your new home. Okay, but uh, where will it hang, though? Where? Mm, right there. Until I leave? Why? Because you're gonna come live with Mark and me. Until my mom comes home? Here? Yes. With you and Mark? Yes. You mean we're gonna be a family? Yeah! But then Mark collapses from cancer. <laughs> it could be his heart was two sizes too small. I know that sounds pretty morbid to laugh at, but that's what would have happened in the other movies. That's when the doctor shows up to give the news of the special connection. Dr. Andrews, hi. Good evening. Is something wrong with Mia? Oh no, it's about your son. He's, he's better? So really, it's my fault. So you can stop blaming each other now. Read the card first. Dear mom and dad, I never loved you, so if I die, don't be sad about it. How could you be so honest? Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, very much. thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Well, after Doogie Hauser leaves, it's time to have a cry fest. <laughs> it's Gram Grandpa's pocket watch. <laughs> Pocket watch! I want to get a master's in social work. And you're <laughs> probably picking yourself off the floor right now, but... <laughs> I figured out that I like doing what you do, Mom. Helping kids. <laughs> Fuck me. Why? Call the police. Love, Sean. He should have ended it with, As long as I'm living, my mommy you'll be. That would have been good. That's all well and good, but what does Nathan do after he leaves the house? That's what I really want to know. Hey, got rid of that box that was taking up all that room. When I saw his parents get the news that their son didn't make it. It made me happy. I felt like I lost a piece of meat too. Piece of meat? But tonight, Ta -da! when I was with his family, Made me want to make 10 Sharknado movies. Thank you. Thank you for looking kind of like Kirsten Dunst in this light. I think my water just broke. Ew. Ah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I know what it means. Stop. Stop, everybody. Oh, you just spilled the water on the floor. <laughs> These clothes are blue. They're blue. I want to be blue again. <sighs> it's a boy. Having a boy makes me want to sound like Michael J. Fox. Touchdown, Jesus. Baby. I always wanted a boy. If it was a girl, I wouldn't have loved her. All right, well, let's get back to the main characters of the movie one last time for a little It's a Wonderful Life ending. Wherever I am, it's a party. I'm a real party animal, me. Is my mom's present here? No, she died. How about no? No, sweetie, it's not. Well, since Christmas isn't really till tomorrow, it will probably come tomorrow. You know, kid, could you just grow up real quick so that you're not making the party so uncomfortable? You got the one thing no. that's gonna make this tree perfect. Mmm, the angel. <laughs> oh no. Did I say something wrong? No, no, no. Should I go after her, do you think? You've done oh, enough, Grandma. Okay. It's just the angel has wings, and she doesn't believe in that. Even though when Emily ran out of the room, she was clearly upset about something, they try to play it off like she was just going to get a picture. Tricked ya! Can you lift me up? You raised me up! Look, we're already raising you. Do we have to raise you up, too? Why are we still here? Just to
oh, this is the music from the other movies. They got the rights to the music. Whenever I, I would feel alone, I would feel him with me. He's a ghost? Am I the only one who feels bad that this film has completely ignored the fact that this kid keeps trying to tell all the adults in her life that she sees dead people? No, that's not something to be happy about. But perhaps there's time for one last Christmas miracle. <laughs> wow, he learned to return the camera. He's always taking movies with it. Can we watch them, please? Mm, we're gonna check them first before we play them in front of everybody at the Christmas party. Hi, Emily. Merry Christmas, that's sweetheart. That's my mom. She doesn't look like that anymore because now she doesn't have skin. See, I told you she was coming. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like all out of tears. I can't cry anymore. I mean, not that I was actually crying or anything because I'm a man. Right, Barkley? I know there's a bug over there. There's a stink bug in my house. It's not very Christmas. Barkley's seeing it. You see it? Love, it's, all it's all about, about hope. I'm alive. I'm living inside this picture. Help, get me out of here. And I live in you. Until I don't live anymore when I get hit by a truck. All about love. Well, it turns out the song that the mom wrote wasn't really all that good anyway. Elephant shoe. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of Christmas Hope. And what did we all think of it? Well, not a lot that's Christian about it. It's more Chris... Ugh. Christmas, not a lot that's related to Christmas shoes other than it loosely ties into the previous movie because of the doctor and stuff, and it's just more connections. It's just like, oh, no man is an island. Can you believe that? Wow. If you're looking to cry, then this is a movie to watch. It's hard to say anything about this movie that is any different than any of the other Christmas shoes movies or any of the other like million Hallmark movies that are made for TV. This movie is another one of those. Uh, I feel like the quality was down a little bit on this than the first one. And the budget was probably lower because it all took place kind of in one house. I don't know. Sappy. Not my not my cup of tea or my cup of hot chocolate. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Say Goodnight, Kevin. Be sure to join me over at SGK Plus if you want to watch these movies live and with me and uh, get to see all of my lame jokes before I cut it up. Time for dragon tales. Make it appropriate for the masses. I'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget that we just added the full year subscription of SGK Plus. Come and join me over there. It's a blast.